we found out that timing is critical. Uh, you can do everything possible. If the timing is not right, uh, unfortunately, it will not succeed. Our district and our staff did everything possible uh, to educate our community, particularly our taxpayers, for the need for the second nickel, and we did everything we could to advocate for that second nickel, but the timing simply was not right in our community. The only thing that I would, uh, would share for any other district that is considering uh, proposing the second nickel would be uh, if you start seeing that you're not having the support that you would like in the community, then literally having phone banks and contacting every registered voter in your district, letting them know about the need for the second nickel and letting them know when the vote would occur and asking them to go out and vote. Uh, because I think that's what our, our uh, opposition did. They, they had a huge voter turnout. Um, uh, and we, at this time, do not anticipate proposing the second nickel again. Uh, our 2020 vision was really our guiding light for several years in terms of, of how we wanted our graduates uh, to leave our school system and be prepared for the next chapter. Uh, of life, in fact, for, for the rest of their life. Uh, it has largely served its purpose, and so actually our new profile of a graduate has taken the place uh, or, or transformed into uh, what our 2020 vision uh, used to be. And that uh, profile of a graduate uh, just really gives us a visual of how uh, we want our graduates to be when they when they leave Crittenden County Schools. The, the visual is uh, a profile of the side of a, a person's head and different parts of the head are uh, have different characteristics listed there. Communications, collaboration, problem solving, those are, are just a few of, of those characteristics that we want included in the profile of a graduate from Crittenden County Schools. Uh, we have pretty well developed the framework for that. We're just now in, in the process of filling in some last details and fine-tuning it, but, but it is already at a point that it can become the new guiding light uh, for our district. Well, Crittenden County School District, like many of the districts in Kentucky, is a small rural school district we have approximately 1,300 students, 200 staff members. We only have one elementary, one middle, one high school. Uh, and once again, like many school districts in Kentucky, we have very limited resources. We are committed to removing every possible barrier from our students being able to succeed and then giving them as many varied opportunities as possible. Uh, we're blessed to be one of those districts that has free breakfast and lunch program for all our students, uh, but we go beyond that. We have just added a second chance breakfast. So for our middle and high school students between first and second period, uh, they've got five minutes there that they can run by a table and pick up something to eat. Uh, so if they you know, got there just as the bell rang to start first period, miss that opportunity for a free breakfast, they now have that opportunity. We send backpacks home with our kids uh, that need them on the weekends with ready to eat food so that we know that, that they're not hungry on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we do uh, a summer feeding program, uh, but that, uh, the location travels around our community each day. Uh, and we not only do it in June, but we do it in July. So. Uh, just really trying to make sure that, that nutrition and nourishment is something that our kids don't have to worry about year-round uh, and throughout the, the full day. We have even built beds for our kids to have in their home. Uh, we provide school nurses and mental health counselors for every student uh, in the district. So. We just really try to make sure that 
any of those basic needs of our children are met so that they're able to focus on learning and achieving. Some of the opportunities that we provide, uh, we were one of the first 25 to 27 school districts in the state to offer the aerospace program, uh, which is really unique because we actually have uh, probably one of the nicest small airports uh, in the state and so we've been able to partner with them we've even been able to get an old plane donated that our kids are going to take apart and put back together as part of that aerospace program um, another commitment that our board has made for a number of years is that for any student or group that qualifies for state or national competition we will pay up to 75 percent of the expenses of attending and participating uh, in that competition. Uh, so we just try to provide opportunities that allow our students to have exposure and experiences uh, that you wouldn't expect in that small rural district. That is something that I talk about all the time and that is reminding our state and our nation that public education is one of the core values of our country, along with the belief that every student has the right to an education. And that second part differentiates us from many of the high achieving countries around the world because their belief is not that every child has a right to an, uh, a public education, but every child uh, that they consider worthy of a public education has that right. Um, beyond being a part of the very fabric of our culture, public education is the foundation of economic development and I think that is something that, that many folks have forgotten. Public education prepares and provides an overwhelming majority of this country's workforce and so as a state and as a country, we need to focus our efforts, our energy, and our resources on making public education the best that it can be. Dividing our efforts, our energy, and our resources is not going to help us as a country. I think one of the most important things as a board member is for us to remember that we are there to provide guidance uh, to the district, but the experts are those individuals, those staff members of our district that are, are serving our purpose day in and day out. And so it's so important to get to know them. Uh, let them get to know you. And so spending time uh, at special events, uh, before school opens or after it closes, just times that you can have a few minutes for those staff members to see you and get to know you and more importantly for you to get to know them. The best thing that I do uh, is actually be the number one cheerleader for our staff. Uh, and that is something that our staff regularly says to me. Our staff, those are the individuals that are there working with our kids every day. Whether that's a teacher, an administrator, a cafeteria worker, a bus driver, a janitor. Those are the folks that are there interacting and, and loving our kids every day. And so the best thing that I can do as a board member is to, to be their cheerleader and let them know that they've got someone who believes in them as an advocate for them. One of the things that I love about the role that I serve is it gives me the opportunity on opening day with all 200 of our school staff and closing day with all 200 of our school staff uh, to provide them a speech of inspiration and encouragement and affirmation. Uh, and, and that is something I love, love doing. I enjoy preparing for that. I'm collecting stories uh, and, and quotes throughout uh, the time between each speech. And uh, they, 
the staff, many of them will come up to me afterwards or before and say, you know, what stories are you going to have to share with us this time? And, and so I know it's something that they look forward to and appreciate. So being their cheerleader uh, is, is my number one role. How do you build community support for public education, specifically your schools and your students in your community?